Okay, today I'm just going to show you a different frog. And this is a frog for a very young child, like a three-year-old or four-year-old. So all you do is you get self-drying clay or paper clay, make an egg shape. So you need to have your hands a little bit damp. Getting there slowly. Can be quite small. Sometimes young children don't have the concentration to do uh, more detail frog. And it's great to show them something. You know, sometimes you just give them a piece of clay and say, just do something with it. And they're like, oh, what do I do with it? At least with this, um, you can just show them, okay, we want you to make an egg. What does an egg look like? So there's a bit of a lesson there. It's an oval shape. It's round. It has an area that's slightly pointy. Or you can say that make a pebble as well so you want it to stand up like so. so you might flatten one area up I ran out of clay okay and the same principle applies hands a little bit damp like so Now you can exaggerate the eyes on this one. So basically school again, school again. And use a tip would be better. Same with the eyes. Children probably won't school the young ones. You could you might have to do that with them. Or if you don't want to, just let them push it in. It will come apart though, and you could possibly glue it later. I even use my nails sometimes to do it. So there's my frog. That's a basic frog for a young one. And all you have to do is wait for it to dry. So they might get the end of a biro, and we might do the same. Give it a bit of detail, like so. Oops. Okay. And you might say to them, okay, how are you feeling today? And they might say, I am feeling happy today. So you say, well, what does a happy face look like? And a happy face looks like a big smile, like so. And it's a reflection of how they're feeling today. They're feeling happy. If they're feeling sad, allow them to put a sad face and maybe ask them, well, why are you feeling sad? What's sad? Why are you sad? And sometimes through making art as an experienced um, teacher, um, I sit with the students and just chat with them while they're making their art. I don't necessarily always talk about the art, but all sorts of things. They share all sorts of things with you, how they're feeling. And then, you know, say, well, why are you having a bad day? And I say, oh, I miss because such and such. It's a really good way to start a conversation Okay, they might have a little bit of a nose there. So that is my basic, probably five minute frog, which I will paint up to show you. Now you could also, if you wanted to, um, to extend it, just push, create two little pebbles. That's still sticky because it's nice and moist and you can add some little feet on it as well, but you don't have to. Uh, and that can be something that they can give to their parents, a paperweight, or just for fun. They can have it in their room and enjoy it and say that they made it. There we go. So that's some feet for my simple frog. You can And you can have them all. I've done this very quickly, but um, some of the more, uh, the older students like to do this sort of frog. And, but they'll do a whole series of them. They'll do a big one and a small one. And then what I get them to do is I get them to actually look at different pebbles and the shapes of pebbles and they'll 
come in and they'll sculpt them. If they get really big, like something like that, about 20 centimeters in height, I do get them to um, push a tool into the center of the solid clay just to aerate it inside so we don't have anything. And most of the time the students do want to um, fire them. So I've got to be mindful that there is no air bubbles are trapped in there. So while the clay is still soft, you can do all sorts of things to it. And you'd be really surprised how creative st students are or children are. I keep saying students because I am a teacher and it's uh, something that comes naturally to me. Okay, so you might just even put a few more. There you go. So just by adding a few markings, the nose, you know, pushing the brush in, um, the feet, the mouth, you've made a different frog. So now we have two frogs, one for older children to do and one for younger children to do. And it's a great, great, great fun little activity they can do. Um, if they love working with clay, I'd really encourage it. And if you're in an area where you can actually ask a potter, a ceramics place to fire it, fire it and then buy glaze. And glaze is like a, obviously like a um, ground down glass that you apply and they'll fire it for you again. And you get that nice either glossy or matte finish. Um, and it's more sort of, uh, it lasts a lot longer. And they're the sorts of things that your local council, you can, most local councils here in Australia, there are sections for children to showcase their artwork and um, they love it. And it's not a matter of, there's no panel that chooses the work. It's basically, they have room for 200 works of art. That's including adults or youth awards and they will take the first 200 and put them in. And, you know, they get judged. Sometimes they get little certificates. It's a great way to boost their confidence, especially if they're feeling a little bit low. But for the little ones, they love that sort of thing. And it's kind of cute. They'll be so happy with that. You don't have to put all that detail in. You can just put the eyes and the mouth. That's it. And if they don't want to do the mouth by scoring it, you can even draw it with a paint pen later on. Today I'm going to paint the small frog and show you how to mix some colours. So you can just use basic colours, which are your Atelier colours. You don't have to, these are artist quality, um, which I use with older children, but you can actually buy acrylic paints from any art supply or sometimes even Kmart and Woolworths have got small pots of paint. The only thing with the little pots of paint, sometimes they're dried out because they've been sitting on the shelf for a while. So these are the types of paints. You've got um, Art Spectrum, Atelier, and this is just a dis different type of Atelier. They come in different series depending on the colors and you pay more for certain colors. So what I will initially do, I've decided I'm going to paint the smaller frog in a, in a green of some sort. And mixing colors can be a lot of fun. So just... Um, Opening up the green, a little bit of white. Get it opened. Take that off. Just so that I can tint the colour. I'm using a combination. Oh, that's I can't. No, I don't want that colour there. I'm using a combination of paints. It doesn't really matter what you have. It's basically make a little bit of color out of all sorts of different types of paint. Uh, a little bit of green, a phthalo green, which is, it appears quite dark, but once you apply some lightness to it, it's quite nice. Might just put a little bit of red for contrast, okay. And this one here, which is called actually frog green, but it's a pretty olivey green color. It's not reflect, when you look at the color on the actual label here, is is very different to the color that comes out. So don't be sort of fooled by the colors on the labels. All right, so the first thing is mix some color. And sometimes children just like to mix color, which is great fun. Okay, so that's quite a nice intense color. Adding a little bit of yellow to make it a little bit more green, less teal. Right, and I'll bring my frog up. Just 
pop that right here. You want it fairly thick. Paint. I think I like it quite yellow. Might put a little bit of yellow in a dab of white. Let's see what's happened. It lights it up a bit. So we can just paint this frog green. Most young children, if you're teaching them about colour, will identify with the green frog. So I'm using a flat brush for this. It doesn't really matter what brush you use. It's just what I have lying around in the house. As you apply the paint, it's actually quite dry. It's drying up really quickly. Try not to get it on the eyeballs if you can avoid it. Sometimes it's good to make um, quite a large quantity. See, now that's a different colour. So usually if I'm making it for several um, students, I make up a little pot of colour. You can buy the exact colour and that saves you having to do what I'm doing, but I find children like to make different colours and we talk about the colours they make, we talk about the colours that they've mixed and how they made them and what they like about them and how they make them feel. So it's really quite fun. Okay. a bit of a mess of the eye there doesn't matter I'll go back over it so just dabbing it on with younger children that they, they are not going to have the skills to um, possibly hold it with two fingers they might just you know paint it all green and that's okay too it's a bit wobbly because I'm leaning up against some bubble wrap uh, and this can be made with older children too. They can do a whole series of these, dif just different shapes or slightly bigger and get them to go and collect pebbles if they can just to study the shapes. You might want to change up the um, feet a little bit, make them either a bit darker or a bit lighter. Apply some water just to thin the paint out. You can paint underneath. I'm not going to worry about painting underneath. I probably wouldn't do it for younger children. And they wouldn't certainly do it. Okay, so it's starting to look like a cute little frog. All right. So as you can see, it's starting to dry really quickly. I can see the paint being absorbed by the clay really fast. Kind of looks cool with a bit of yellow. Okay, and then I might uh, get some black. Carbon black is the colour. You can wait for that to dry, the, the inside of the eye will just go straight in. I don't think the children will wait to dry, but um, so I'm just going to go straight in and see what happens. Just put a little black thing there. Yeah, probably best to wait for it to dry. It's pretty liquefied in there. It's starting to take shape. Might give him a really red mouth. Now the red you may need to apply several times. But little kids won't do that. Like so. 
the smiley face. You might want to have some bloodshot eyes for a bit of fun. I've got a small brush. This is a, a double zero. The only thing is the bristles a little bit old. If you don't look after your bristles when you paint, sometimes I sort of I'm a little bit careless with them and they don't point. You can't create a little point, which is what I'm trying to do here. So you can use it as a little bit of a guide. I don't think I'll use that one, that's damaged. But this one here, you can see that it's got a little bit of a point. That's why I like the dome brushes because they do have that tiny point. So I can go in, get a bit of red. And give him some bloodshot eyes, he or she. I wouldn't encourage you to do this with very young children, just basically older kids who have the fine motor skills to, um, you know, control the lines. The other way you can do it is you can get a really fine marker and just and just draw back into it, and that's that's fun as well. So I might just use this and oops, put some lips on it. I might introduce a third, fourth colour. How many colours have I got? White. One, two, three, five. Okay. So you'll get different levels of ability here, concentration. Sometimes they'll just quickly just do it all one colour and that'll be it. And other times, you know, they'll, they have the fine motor skills and the patience to do a little bit more. So you might decide, I'm going to get a little bit of white to see what happens here. It's a nice colour. Might put a little bit of teal. So it's just playing around with the colours. Let's see what happens. Oh, that looks nice underneath there. Actually, when I'm thinking I said this is for three and four year olds, I don't really think. They could possibly make the eyes and the round ball and that's about it. Maybe just do one colour and maybe put two dots using um, earbud cleaners, but you can actually extend this to quite an advanced level but still have the simplified form which is which is lovely they wouldn't have the concentration to do this okay so if I take the frog off put them on here uh, white piece of paper I always like to look at the artwork on a white piece of paper. As far as I'm going to get it. Alright, so that's a small frog that you can do in a couple of days.